and uh, we experience a lot of questions in our lives and the moments that we just want answers. And unfortunately, the answers don't come as sometimes we would like them to come. We have the why, why me? Sometimes we ask why me? Sometimes we ask how and all those. Or sometimes we have positive questions. Do you know a positive question? Like, wow, how comes I'm this blessed? That's a positive question. And then a negative question is, God, why is it always me who is going through this? And so we have positive questions and we have those negative questions. But God is not in the business of answering questions. God is in the business of answering prayers. And so if you have taken moments of uh, praying or going before God in presenting your needs before him, then he is a God who answers those prayers. Accepting God's will by grace. Accepting God's will by grace. So I like to uh, take us through a moment whereby the apostles and the disciples, are one of the new apostles who had been rejected, meets the disciples after 14 years. And this is Paul, he had written to the Galatians and Paul had made sure that he tells the Galatians how he wanted things to be. And so he wrote this epistle of the letter to the Galatians and 14 years after, Paul decides, let me go and see what is happening. And so he takes with him Barnabas and he takes with him Titus. And he goes back to Galatia just to see what and how the disciples are faring on. And so as he visits them, he finds Cephas, John and James, those are their disciples, uh, still continue with the work. Now Paul represents two, or rather there is a representation of two groups of people here. Paul is standing on and on representing the Gentiles and Peter James and John are represent all they are preaching to the Jews. And so the two of them are meeting for the first time after 14 years. And the last time they were with Paul, they know a new Paul as a dangerous person. If you ask Peter, do we embrace Paul? Peter will tell you, Unacheza na moto. This is a persecutor. He has come to persecute he, we know him as a persecutor. And so we cannot and we will not tolerate Paul. And if you ask them, what about Barnabas? You say, ah, this one we don't like because we are not sure. Titus, Titus is a puppet of Paul. And if you ask Cephas and John and James, who should receive Christ, they'll tell you only Jews. Gentiles are not supposed to receive Christ. Gentiles are not supposed to embrace the cake of salvation. Salvation is only meant for Jews as per the law of the Jews. And this is the scenario we have in our scriptures today. So if you are with me, let's turn to the book of Galatians chapter 2. As we take the reading, if you have a Bible that has topics or headlines, you will see chapter 2, verse 1 to 10. If you have a Bible, you know those real, real Bibles. Uh, the topic is Paul accepted by the apostles. But if you go, to verse 10, the small topic is Paul 
opposes Peter. This guy has just been accepted. Then he goes to the opposition. He has just come back after 14 years and he has just been accepted. And so he is enjoying the fellowship. In fact, as you read, you will see, they gave him hand of fellowship. And so as soon as he's given hand of fellowship, he sits with them and he tells Peter, ah, 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 I am opposing you. Let's take the reading. We'll read the first ten and the other ones we shall go through as we share God's word. Then after 14 years, I went up again to Jerusalem with Barnabas, taking Titus along with me. I went up because of, of a revelation and said before them, though privately before those who seemed influential, the gospel that I proclaim among Gentiles, in order to make sure I was not running or had not run in vain. But even Titus, who was with me, was not forced to be circumcised, though he was a Greek. Yet because of false brothers secretly brought in who slipped in, in to spy out, sorry, let me start from verse 4 again. Yet because of false brothers secretly brought in who slipped in to spy out a freedom that we have Christ Jesus, so that they might bring us into slavery, to them we did not heal in submission even for a moment, so that the truth of the gospel might be preserved for you. And from those who seem to be influential, what they, what they were makes no difference to me. God shows no partiality. Those, I say, who seemed influential added nothing to me. On the contrary, when they saw that I had been entrusted with the gospel to, to the uncircumcised, just as Peter had been entrusted with the gospel to the circumcised, for he who worked through Peter for his apostolic ministry to the circumcised worked also through me for mine to the Gentiles. And when James, Cephas, and John, who seemed to be pillars, perceived the grace that was given to me, they gave the right hand of fellowship to Barnabas and me that we should go to the Gentiles and they to the circumcised, only they ask us to remember the poor, the very thing I was eager to do. Lord, we bless your word, this we ask in Jesus' name. Once again, I'd just like to paraphrase that reading that we have just read, and we have seen, after 14 years of writing this epistle, Paul decides to go back to Galatia and to just see and check out on what is happening and so as Paul goes back to this city he obviously remembers that they are still the disciples the disciples are still there and the disciples are continuing with the work of the gospel as he had left them and one thing that is happening there is some small tension this tension between ministry to the Jews and ministry to the Greeks or to the Gentiles. And there is tension because the Jews believe in circumcision and the Gentiles, they don't bother about it. And so there is a tension of acceptance and there is also a tension of doing things the right way. But Paul decides, let me just emerge and appear again and see what is happening to the letter that I wrote just in case I wrote in vain, I want to know if my writing or my ministry to these people was in vain after 14 years. And he takes with him at least Barnabas and Titus and so that he can have a witness. And he's saying, he discovers that he has been anointed for the ministry to the Gentiles. His anointing is and they are the anointing or an anointing to the ministry or to the uh, to the gentiles while peter has this anointing to the ministry of the jews and they have been brought together for a purpose accepting god's will by grace and the two of them or these two factions have to work together because 
God wants the gospel to be preached. These two factions have to work together because God wants them to coexist. And first, the first thing that they do, especially the disciples, they know Paul, but they have to accept Paul by grace. Accept him by grace. And so it's only by grace that Peter and James and John looks at Paul and give him a hand of fellowship. It's only by grace that they are even eager to receive him and say, by grace, Paul, we accept you. By grace, Paul, we are okay with you. It's not easy because we saw you persecuting people. It's not easy because we doubt that you have been cleansed of your persecution spirit, but by grace, we embrace you or we will embrace you because this is the will of God that the ministry to the Gentiles and to the Jews you have been anointed for this particular group we have this anointing and so we have to coexist to make sure that the work of God is done number one people of grace accept we have freedom in Christ Verse 4 and 5, the Bible says that the, the text that you have read, that yet because of false brothers secretly brought, I mean, yet because of false brothers secretly brought in, who slipped in to spy out our freedom that we have in Christ, so that they might bring us into slavery. To them we did not yield in submission even for a moment. Paul, or rather, uh, Paul is aware that he has a precious thing to guard and he has a precious thing to protect and this is the freedom he has in Christ. Yes, you have accepted me, but one thing I will guard with all my heart is the freedom that we have or I have in Christ because this is the freedom or this is the reason why I am standing here today because I have I've come back to see if you are guarding the same gospel as you are preaching. Remember at this time, these two are preaching the same thing. The group that is preaching, that is preaching to the Jews is, is supposed to be preaching the same message as this group that is preaching to the Gentiles. But there's one thing that happens. They accept the team that is led by Paul by grace. They accept the Gentiles by grace. They accept the Gentiles by grace. It may be situations in our life that sometimes we have to accept other people by grace. Maybe after being married for four years, you have discovered that it's only by grace you will live with this man. And so by grace God gives you and God works in you grace to have the calling of a wife to tolerate this somebody called husband. Maybe it's by grace God will give you strength to tolerate a person that God calls wife to you. Maybe it's by grace only, and it has only been by grace that uh, God has uh, given you the strength to tolerate your employer. Maybe it has been 10 years or 14 years like Paul, and you have been with these people. This person is, he, he is like an electric pole. They are not moving. They are not going anywhere. It's you to be embraced by God's grace to accept this person and say, this is the person that God has put in my life and I will by grace live with them and accept them and walk with them. Maybe it's by only by grace that God has allowed you to experience certain health conditions in your life. It's not your own doing. It's not by your own strength. It's not by anything, but it's only by grace that God has allowed it to be and it has been, you look at things and you look at situations and you say, how can it be? But it's only by grace. Maybe it's by grace that God 
has allowed you to be in that campus that you have been in for the last two or three years and you're continuing. And as you look at things you wish to be anywhere, maybe it's the high school that you are in or the academic situation or institution that you are in, it's only by grace sometimes that God allows you to be there. Sometimes you look at your business and you wonder, why am I even still investing in this business? Why is it that I'm still wasting money in this business? Why am I still here? Why can I not try another business? But God sometimes allows you to have the grace to continue being in that situation because God wants to bring out the best, accepting what God brings our way by grace. It's only by grace that these disciples look at Peter and Paul and each other, they have a sword behind them. But Paul reminds them, you have the anointing to be, I have the apostolic anointing to the Gentiles and you have the apostolic anointing to the Jews. We all have to coexist, to coexist because of the gospel. And Paul says, it's only because of the gospel by grace we will coexist because of the freedom we have in Christ. It's only by grace that sometimes you do and you are in the places that you are and it's only by God's grace. Secondly, people of grace accept the truth of the gospel. In verse Five, the Bible says, to them we did not yield in submission even for a moment, so that the truth of the gospel might be preserved for you. There were some pressures that were coming, and the pressures were like, uh, these people already wanted, they thought Barnabas and Titus were not as well founded as Paul was. And so they are bringing in the doctrine of circumcision to Barnabas and they are pushing into Titus to see if they can make them Jews and they can make them Jews. And Paul says it doesn't matter. What matters is people of grace accept the truth of the gospel. And the truth of the gospel here is that to them we did not yield in submission even for a moment so that the truth of the gospel might not be might be preserved for you. There are some things Paul stood with. Yes, he has just been reaccepted. He has just come back and he has been given a hand of fellowship. But he still stands for the truth. He still has some things that he says, by grace, yes, you have accepted me, but truth remains. By grace, you have embraced me, but truth remains. We are all being unified by the gospel. My reunion with you is because of the gospel. But the truth of Christ is that I am not giving up the gospel that is our unifying factor. It's only by grace that we will be brought together as a nation. But also it's only in the process of truth that we will be founded and Paul says, even though Peter and anybody else you are trying, but you will not be separated from truth. Freedom and truth are like twins. Truth in itself does not set you free unless it remains with you. And Paul is sure about this. He is sure that truth cannot set you free unless it is inside you. Christ, you cannot enjoy the freedom of Christ and say, I'm enjoying the freedom of Christ until that truth is in you. That's why in the same scripture in chapter 2, verse 20 and 21, Paul says, I've been crucified with Christ. It's no longer I who lives, but Christ lives in me. And the life I now live by faith, I live in this hand of God. It's only it will only set you free if it is inside you. And so if truth is inside you, the truth will set you free. And Paul says, I will protect this truth. I'll protect this truth. Paul points out the gospel to be true. 
and he says the enemy opposes the truth, even in our society. So truth must set you free. That's the reason why I ask you a question before we start on is that we all pray and we have been praying. And I don't know if you are praying questions. How many of us were praying questions? When you are praying, you are praying questions. How many of us were praying prayers? Because if you are praying prayers, God answers prayers. If you are praying questions, I think he hasn't yet been able to answer them. And God answers prayers. Fortunately or unfortunately, God to some prayers, he says yes. And to some prayers, he says no. But human nature, how can God say no to my prayer? And how can God say yes to their prayer? It's human nature. So we have a conflict inside us that really battles but God's will is perfect. He has answered a prayer. And he will answer. And his will is already perfect. I remember when Dr. Siriaka was praying last Sunday. And she said, Shoshu said a prayer or her vote was already cast in heaven. Because God, even if before you went, as you are praying for peace, God already is peace. So if we are praying to a person who already is. We are submitting or committing our prayers to a person already who is. And so we are the ones to, by grace, subject to the answer that this person has answered. And this person is not a person like any other. This person is supreme. This person is God. Whichever way the answer will go, we pray. If you believe in prayer, you pray. Prayer is not changing the will of God. Prayer will never change God. If you have been praying to change God, you will be praying for a long time. Prayer is yielding to the will of God. If you yield to the will of God, then you will be having a good prayer time. But if you are praying, desiring to change God, it will be a tough moment for you. Because there is no amount of prayer that can be prayed by any corporate or individual believer that can change the will of God. The will of God is perfect. And the will of God is permanent. And the will of God will not be moved by any kind of prayer. The will of God is supreme. And the will of God is unchangeable. And so God's will is already cast like on a stone. And so as we pray, God then tunes our hearts to acceptance to, towards him. That's why we say, God, may your will be done. And so his will is already there and it's already perfect. And so as I pray, I'm asking, Lord, I know you have already decided and I know you have already answered this prayer, but I know oh, as human beings, I have my inclination. And so, Lord, if my inclination is not as per your will, help me to incline as per your will, which is perfect, which is good, and which is always and will never change. God's will is truth. And this truth is what Paul is saying. People of grace accept the truth of the gospel. Good Christians accept the truth of God. He will never change. Whatever he has answered, even if you go around this church running ten times, or you visit a magician, he will not change. Whatever God has decided, it is final. And if it's the will of God and God has decided, God is already done. 
We are the ones who have to go through psychological processes of grief and loss and acceptance, but God is already decided. And God will give grace. I know a thorn in the leg is not a comfortable thing, but God gives and will give grace. People of grace number three accept the race they have to run. People of grace accept the race they have to run. In Galatians chapter 2, Paul is still highlighting the same thing that he also highlighted in 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 24 to 27, and he's saying the same things. Paul is saying, but before me is set a race, and this race I have to run it. And in a race, if you are not careful, you will either be disqualified, distracted, or discouraged. If the three happens to you, you will not win the race. If you are running, as Paul is comparing in this scripture that you have just read in Galatians 2.2, 2, and also 1 Corinthians, the wonderful scripture that says his eyes are fixed and he's running a race. If you are in a race and you are distracted, then your race is about to be lost. If you are in a race, and you choose to be discouraged, then you are in, you are in trouble. Because I enjoy sports, I will just give an example of what happened yesterday. 5,000 meters finals in Diamond League. We have Faram Mohamed and we have the Ethiopians. And we have Chelimo who has become now American. But that is ours. He's only now wearing an American shirt. But the name even says he's ours, Chelimbo. And we have our own Kenyan Ruto, who was second last. But they, they, they decided to distract Farah Mohamed, the Ethiopians. They knew Farah Mohamed won 10,000 meters, and they decided to distract Farah Mohamed. So they sent this 18 year old to distract Farah Mohamed and Chase and chase and chase and chase. And Farah Mohammed was distracted on, in this race. And the Ethiopian who was to win is lying forth, watching the distraction. And they are talking with this that is distracting this other one. And the tactic worked and they defeated Farah Mohammed, world champion. In a race, if you are distracted, you lose. Now, right now, there are so many things that are distracting us running our race. Some of them are the things you are posting on your social media. Some of you, your social media, the ones I'm reading, I'm like, oh, no, no. Ninani, it's still you. You have been distracted by, you are running well. What has happened to you that you are posting such things? Some of us, we are posting things that we are very insensitive, and yet we are all in this race. Please, don't be distracted. Run your race. Run your race very well. Don't be excited. Keep running your race. For people of grace accept the race they have to run. Now, you have to run your race. No one will come and run your race for you. The enemy will seek for you to be disqualified distracted or discouraged, but keep your life centered on the gospel. Look unto Jesus, the author and the perfecter of your faith. You don't need grace when you don't need it. You need grace when you really need it. And God has promised us grace. And finally, people of grace accept the task entrusted to them you know, as much as all this is happening, God still has his assignments. God has his assignments. God has not yet changed his assignments. As a believer, God still has the assignment for you. And don't be distracted so that your assignment is snatched from you. God, don't be distracted so that God 
takes away that assignment that is supposed to be your assignment because God is watching you and saying, I have your assignment. Peter, his assignment is a, the anointing to reach to the Jews, while Paul, his assignment is apostolic blessing to the Gentiles. The two of them, even though you have given me the hand of fellowship, Peter, my assignment remains, which is I have to continue running the race to the Jews or to the Gentiles. And me, Peter, I have to continue running my race to the Jews. The assignment remains. The assignment remains. God has the person chosen and the power assigns. He does not give assignments that doesn't have power. God does not... Uh, prepare an assignment for you that he will not enable. And so he has already given apostolic anointing to Peter, I mean to Paul, because he sees Gentiles will listen more to this one than to Peter. And even in this verse 11 downwards, he has to rebuke Peter, because now Peter is already being, is working well, but Peter when he sees some Jews come, is changing, is is stopping to fellowship with these people because uh, the Jews will see him with Gentiles. And Paul rebukes Peter harshly and tells him, you are a hypocrite. You are a hypocrite. Let not your hypocrisy come when there is so much pressure. For God has you chosen as the person, and he still has assignments for you. He still has assignments for you, different assignments of, for different people. My assignment is different from your assignment. The task I've been assigned to has also different power, so that God sees the assignment accomplished. The power that has been, ent uh, 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 been endowed on me is not the same power that has been endowed on you because there, we have different assignments. And so because of the difference in assignment, God gives different powers to different people for their assignments to be completed. And so people of grace accept the task entrusted to them. And Paul says this very clearly. He says in verse 7 and 8, he says, that on the contrary, when they saw that I had been entrusted with the gospel to the uncircumcised, just as Peter had been entrusted with the gospel to the circumcised, for he who worked through Peter for his apostolic ministry to the circumcised, worked also through me for mine to the Gentiles. He recognizes difference in the assignments, and there is different anointing for every assignment given by God. God cannot give you an, an assignment that he will anoint you otherwise. And so people of grace embrace the task that God has given them. In conclusion, have you ever tried to do things that you have not been assigned to do? Or have you ever tried to do or be in the career line that you have no idea of? That's why people specialize. Because we specialize for ease of doing whatever we do best. Uh, last Sunday I was joking with, with Mama Kinoti and we were in the first service as we are preaching. You are saying, God has blessed Mama Kinoti to be a caterer, while God has blessed Pastor Anton to be a pastor. And you are saying, if you called Pastor Anthony to do for you catering, he will do for you mashakura. You know mashakura? You will not like those things Pastor Anthony will bring. But if you call Mama Kinoti, you will have good food. Different anointing, different assignments. Yet, 
all complement one another. And so you don't need grace when you don't need it. Actually, you need grace when you really need it. Right now, we need grace. In different perspectives, we need grace in different areas. Some of us need political grace. Some of us need marital grace. Some of us need academic grace. You're looking at these things ahead of you and you're saying, if there's no grace, I'm cooked. Relationship-wise, somebody is saying, if I don't have grace, this relationship, I am all done. In business, you're looking at your small or big enterprise, and you're saying, Lord, if there's no grace, I don't know how I will proceed from today henceforth. And as we pray, we like to pray as we tell God, Apewe Sifa, Apewe Sifa, God of grace, God that, God that blesses us with grace that we need in different times at different situations, in different circumstances, a God that gives grace. Grace to be accepted and grace to accept. A grace that I, Paul, after 14 years, I've come back, accept me just as I am. But grace to also do my assignments as God has anointed me to do them. Are you there and you need grace? Just meditate as we shall pray together.